dinky dink. <laughs> wow. You, you seem so <laughs> enthused. Yeah. Fuck no. <laughs> so, Carter, uh, I'm not going to say we're going to talk you off the ledge because I don't think any of us um, loved the movie. <laughs> I don't think any of us were like, oh, this is my favorite thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, like this sums up my feelings. I respect the movie. Mm-hmm. I go ahead. I respect what they were going for. Yep. Yeah. Part of part of me does have the respect thing, but I genuinely liked how unnerved I felt through the whole movie. Yep. Like that was that was a feat. Because I haven't, mm-hmm. I'm I'm old and bitter. Like I've seen yeah. sons die. Like I, <laughs> like, and you can either put a U or an O in there. It's true for either. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it's it's been a long time since I've seen a movie that I'm I had the heebs and the jeebs. Like I, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same same for me. I am I'm hard to get anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a few little areas where it's like, I know that that thing's going to freak me out. I think we've talked about this animal horror, no matter how bad the CG looks, that gets me. But anything outside of that, it's very rare to get me with things. I don't know why. Um, but a CG lion, fuck me up. (laughs) It's saturated. Like think about how many decades upon decades of like horror there has been. And for the most part, all of us have kind of grown up in like. Mm-hmm. It, it like exploding collapsing exploding collapse like four times over yeah, yeah. like it also, was dead and then saw and then it died well and then yeah before before we get too far into our opinions mm-hmm. connor i don't think you've ever gotten to uh uh vocalize yeah fully <laughs> like, explain it outside of like i would um, call it I the yeah. entire movie just waiting for something interesting and i just kept getting greeted with like just tons of blank canvases and like shots of feet or a doorway or a couch hmm. i was like will something fucking happen and then when it does happen it's not that interesting interesting it's over quickly and then the entire ending sequence is like i fucking get it like oh i i I don't like the ending sequence at all yeah i think it actually hurts the stuff with the movie especially that very very end stuff like yeah i think it does it hurts it more than helps it what what exactly like i don't even really remember what the very ending of the movie was because like i said for me the whole movie was a vibe so i just finished it like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the ending it goes like it's basically just a giant hallway then there's like some muffled yelling. There's really bad blood, like fake blood, corn syrup on the floor. Oh, that keeps um, going down the hall, really back blood. out, yeah. down the hall. It keeps yeah. going down the hall. And then mm-hmm. there's just a face that slowly sort of comes into view. And then yeah, I remember that. your name. Yeah. And that's the part yeah. I don't like. The face is stupid to me. The face, yeah. I think it it's takes a real, away like, from it. Yeah, it's a cop out kind of. And it's. You know, I think the it would reason have been better if it was the the toy phone that he was talking yeah. to, that would have been yeah, creepy. absolutely, yeah. Well, and I even you know after that face, we do we do get like the other like weirder imagery, like the like toys like turning into like a pyramid, and like that's the stuff where I was like, okay, that's an interesting thing to show me because it gives you a sense of like the like the Lovecraftian nature of what's going on. Um, and I don't think that they do enough of that. I think that they spend a lot of time like repeating the same beats over and over again. Um, it's 50 minutes of atmosphere with like, oh, it well, but, I, yeah, on, but at the on, same on... time, I, I found a lot of those beats creepy, especially like there's that like early middle section where I, like, like you said, Eric, I was genuinely freaked out, mm-hmm. you know, sitting in my room alone at night. I'm a, I work nights now, so I'm up all night anyway. Uh, so I'm up at like 1 a.m. watching this movie. Move. Yes. <laughs> no. But like I'm I'm up at 1 a.m. in my dark room, in my dark apartment. Uh, <laughs> so this movie worked on me in, on those levels. Um, and it's, it's just like genuinely eerie. And I think knowing the concept also helped me a lot. I don't know. I think... Yeah, I, like I knew what to expect. I think that kind of helped my reaction to it. I don't know. Well, um, two two things real quick. 
one, I know I'd said this a couple times in the in our chats, but this movie nailed the feel of a really good creepy pasta. Yeah, like for me, oh. to me at least. Yes. Like, was mm -hmm. I was. Go ahead. I, I think this movie would have been better as a short, like yep. forty minutes, yeah. forty minutes, almost two hours. Yeah, but no, it's, so it's so much of it that I don't. Like, it, I got yeah, like I, distracted. Like so, I. I, I, I yeah, I've been saying something similar. So my 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 sort of thesis on this is is as follows: the movie host was I think like seventy minutes, um, and if that movie went on for another half hour, it would be just as infuriating as Skin and Rank was to me. Um, I think if they had tried to sustain that movie for another thirty minutes, and Lou, I don't know if you saw that one, but that's the movie where it's four people on a Zoom call. They do they like yeah. summon some boogans, and it proceeds to take them all out what um the fuck is a boogan uh <laughs> it's just a it's just a generic generic term for uh you know a thing because uh, i like when you, were, you typed that in the chat i looked it up and literally all it said was like australian slang for redneck oh. I, I, well i was like i, was, I, like I wasn't sure where stuff. that was going i was like oh that'd be a really interesting turn in this movie like there's all this creepy shit it's just like oh, <laughs> i mean so <laughs> the uh the well i mean the host Same yeah it was, thing, really. it was the first like big success that came for shutter during covid like yeah. that was that was its main claim to fame but it was also the first movie ever shot on zoom i think mm -hmm. um but, but i no, think the, it has i mm -hmm. think it's a good it's a good comparison because again like, yeah. if that movie was two hours long i would hate that film <laughs> i don't think it would work i think it would fall apart under the weight of what it was trying to do and to keep this concept up for too long. Um, I think that's why the searching and missing movies work, because those movies are extremely short, and they don't waste their time or overstay their welcome for too long. Um, uh, I think this uh, the, movie overstays its welcome. So oh, far for sure. The, yeah. uh, the other thing I wanted to ask is, so what was the fucking plot of this movie? Mm. No, I, mean, I don't think there is one. <laughs> well, uh, that's what I was going to say. Scary like, man live upstairs. Scary man uh, uh, talk off camera, and then scary man flip house. So okay, okay. So okay, this is so. Uh, I genuinely want to know, Connor. Like, if you, what do you think the thing is in this movie? Like, what do you think is like the the, the monster the threat in this movie? It's just like yes. a demon or like a poltergeist or something. It's just a, it's just a nasty, you know, uh, mm. entity, supernatural entity. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Eric, yeah, it's. I mean, or is it's, that sort of where you're going to? Yeah, I yeah. mean, based just based on the little evidence they throw at you, mm -hmm. it's you know because you hear human voices as distorted as they are, and right. this thing obviously coming out of nowhere, and the things that happen, it's like okay, so this is some sort of supernatural entity, and that's yeah. that's the best you can do because like I that's why I asked like. What was the plot? And I think Connor yeah. pretty much nailed it. It's it's yeah. all like <laughs> two word, one syllable each. Like yeah, yeah. bad yeah, thing, I, do yeah. things. I, I did have a thought, and I don't know if anybody else thought this. That like, mm. is this like some weird metaphor that this kid fell down the stairs and like his that, bed and is dying? Yeah. That's kind of like, what, what I was thinking. going for. That's kind of like, what maybe. I was thinking at first too. And the I, thing is, like, the doctors, and they're trying to do surgery, and this is, like, his interpretation of his family being, like, in and out of the room. I mean, so that, so I've been saying that, like, my biggest problem is the movie's too long. I also think that the opening bit is not necessary at all. Like, I don't think no. you need to no. do like that. It takes you from that, like, right into everything else without much of a transition. And yeah, like, I def like, that was like, definitely like, jarring. On, you're like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think the opening section, you could have just done that like a regular movie. You could have just shot that like a regular film and then transitioned, and it would actually be less disconcerting because I, you would have some actually, rope to hold on to. I was um, confused just about what we were supposed to be, like, what was our POV for a long time? Yeah. yeah. I was like, what, is, like, are we just like in random camera that's like giving us random shots like well, that's really, sometimes it goes to first person sometimes it goes yep. to you know third person and it doesn't stick to either one 
I yeah. do think it, it's a much better experience if you start with them in the nightmare, I guess, is what I guess is what like the filmmakers have said. Like it's very much supposed to be nightmare dream logic. And I think if you start with them like they wake up and all the doors in their house have disappeared. For one, you again to my length thing, you cut like fifteen minutes off the movie if you just start with them waking up and realizing their doors and windows are gone. Um, and that and toilet then, keeps and disappearing. Cut, yeah, you cut half <laughs> of the disappearing thing shots. Like, I really think you don't need all of that. It is a good oh, yeah. hour of just watching objects be moved. That's, from a, that's an exaggeration. Just, that's an exaggeration. It, is, it does go on for a long time. Like, the toilet bit goes on a little bit too long. I But here's the thing. I like the effect of seeing the window disappear. Yes. Um, and, and, like, it gives this unsettling feeling um i guess the part of it of that that really bothered me was after the big kind of turn with the sister i'm like i don't need any more of the things moving like, yeah we have, yeah we have heightened now you're de-escalating yeah no you're and right I'm, there and i'm like why do we and i'm like i clicked i was like i have another like half hour it's like a half hour 40 minutes after the sister in the basement yes and like, i'm and like enough not yeah. nothing big happens until like the last 10 minutes so there's a good mm-hmm. 20 minutes in there of just more and it's like I do like how low tech it is, but then it's like, all right, you're showing me more of, I know that just a guy's moving it, his fingers are off screen. Like, I get you're going for, like, low special effects, but, like, the more you show me, the less I want to see. Yeah, and they, this is the other thing, like, I understand the movie's lo-fi, and you're trying to tell the audience absolutely nothing. I, I completely understand what you're going for there. You do need to give us some rules, um, and there there are some the rules that are, I, yeah, like there are some rules that are well established. But there's a lot of stuff where it's like, what's the point of this? Does the TV serve any purpose other than like to fill and the runtime? Yes, an ambiance. Yeah, and ambiance. That's all it is. Like, yeah, like if you're gonna focus so much on the TV, give me a thing that the TV does. Like it does a very good job at first. TV the whole time. Yes, like is the TV a light source that is keeping the creature away? Because as early in the movie, they suggest that the thing is doesn't function well in the light, or at least that's like almost suggested, and then that's gone. <laughs> it just seems to be able to do whatever it wants after that. Like um, a waking dream. Mm-hmm. I've seen that movie. Um, <laughs> I think I've seen it like three times. Um I thought like one part way through, I was like, oh, is this like a home invader? And I was like, oh, that actually be like a really fucked up movie of like, Ooh. of like, it's the same movie, but it's not supernatural. And it's just like, they're, you're following this four year old kid while there's someone yeah. in the house doing yeah. shit. Sure. I, for me, like, the biggest thing is with this doing outrageously well against all possible odds. Um, I hope somebody who sees what worked for this, who wants to actually like adapt a creepypasta or something Mm -hmm. uh, adjacent to it actually gets to do that because this, this movie could be good for that at least because I, I will go to my grave in 5,000 years staying Mm -hmm. saying that this is a great creepypasta that Mm -hmm. just is too long. It's a there's a lot of stuff in here that I appreciate. I think I, we're on similar wavelength there, Eric. Where I like a lot of the ideas in here and the execution of some of this. I just don't think it comes together as a movie all that well. I think it's no. I would say I don't know if I would call it a movie. It's a it proof feels, of concept. It feels like, like an art you, film. If you made all of this in like Unreal Engine or um, I don't remember the other one that the. the kid who's doing back rooms did all of his stuff mm-hmm. on, and you made this a vr experience and you kept all the same like very few but the plot points that there are in it and it was just like a 45 minute to an hour long vr experience like it would be far more effective and you could I, tell the exact I same story. Think there's one that is kind of like that with mannequins mm. that like oh. they it's it's like kind of like like so it, it is very creepy. Um, you're like going through a house, and there's all these just like 
really those old kind of no like very no feature mannequins mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. when you're not looking at them they move oh and so they look at them they they stop moving they took the weeping angel thing and also yeah. the thing that uh oh shit what yeah. was it condemned condemned yeah. I, connor i don't know did you play yes yeah you get to fist yeah. fight a bear in the second one um did it do cocaine or you just no. run from it mm-hmm. well um, that's what you do in the first part yeah does, thing, go ahead sorry no go um, ahead go ahead i was gonna say what you were talking about earlier arlen it, it reminded me of like another movie that kind of did like you said the the zoom movie or whatever it was like and I go all the way back into the way beyond to Blair Witch. Mm-hmm. And like that is a movie that did something that no one has done before. And like yeah. is very, very simple, low budget, but it has a fucking plot. Yeah. It does. Well, and that's and again, it builds on rules and exactly like, mythology that makes exactly. sense. Exactly. And, and I think the biggest yeah. thing, yeah, here that we're all complaining is like there's no rules and there's no plot. It's mm-hmm. just yeah. spooky as fuck. Yes. And I'll, I'll give them a lot of credit this is this person's first film um oh and, that's amazing then but yeah they need to find first, an editor they need an editor yeah, th- absolutely and this is the thing first films are rarely even this good <laughs> yeah. they're they're rarely even this competent or i've seen together. like some people's 30th films that aren't this confident <laughs> <laughs> yes i agree i mean you know thx 1138 the original is not um it's not <laughs> There's interesting stuff in there, but it's kind of a mess. Um, and so on and so forth. You can go down the list of, like, first films that are not this interesting. Um, so, like, for that reason, when I see this guy's name come up on whatever his next thing is, I'm going to be curious. I- I'm going to be curious. I need to hear other names involved. I need to hear producers and a writer or, you know, and they actually had a story in mind that was a little bit more well thought out or I'm not even saying that this isn't well thought out. I just, if the thought is there, I don't think that they put it on screen. Correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's a concept, but again, like I, I think it's like, besides the length, I regularly is like all of us is what's there's no plot. Yeah. So like, it's like, all right. The, the idea is like, all right, we have our protagonist is a four year old kid. They see his sister. Things are randomly disappearing parents disappear shit happens Mm -hmm. and it's spooky and like that's the whole movie yeah yeah and a lot of this seems like a very simple fix to me you know again i go back to the vr example like the tv is on during the day so you know that it's daytime and the tv is off at night and when it's off at night the creature is doing things uh and it's Act, it's more active and it's causing problems. And like that, even just that small thing would give you like a way to break it up into like some manageable chunk of time so you can see a progression and goals. Well, but I, th- I think, I think that's at least for me what gave it like that extra oomph on the creepiness level mm-hmm. was just you don't have any concept of how much time has passed. Sure. Like you, you yeah. don't necessarily know where they even are. Like it's, there's just this, this disquiet feeling because you're as off kilter as this four year old or five year old would probably be in this world. So it, it translates well doing that. But Whispering children are creepy. But yeah, let's, uh, let's, everybody, everybody ate their vegetables. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. I want to say one last thing on it, though. That's fun. Like, I was just watching. I was like, "All right, so he's four and she's seven. Why are they still in the fucking house?" Like, this is like, and I know it's a Canadian film. All I kept thinking is, these kids are way too not scared. um, Yeah, for this, which made me start to think: Is this kid dead? Oh, so again, I go, I, I go back to the rules thing. Like, they don't establish enough. They can't get out of the house. Whatever yeah. this is has taken away any way out. Like that's eventually, but like some you of see is, you uh, see one door disappear, I'm yeah. fucking gone. <laughs> I'll well, get old. Yeah. Yeah, jump but through like, a window. This is yeah. one of those it's like a very small thing to be like, show me every single door disappearing in like a montage. <laughs> like like or, or like they, yeah. they see okay. one door and they go to another door and they see it's now gone. 
like them yeah. going door to door and they're just gone. Let's yeah. uh yeah. let's let's step away from Skin and Rink because you and you and Arlen have a real way of like, oh wait, one no, last but... thing, and then it turns into thirty yeah, minutes yeah. of talking about mission to Mars. I was trying to figure out a way to like <laughs> make a joke about white people in horror movies, and of course mm-hmm. these are the dumbest because they're Canadian and there's nothing whiter. Yes, unless they're um, yeah. prime minister at a costume party. So James Gunn announced a lot of shit via some photos, mm-hmm. and. I don't think I've ever been this excited about DC films in my entire life. <laughs> I, I know he's he's going for you and me and Hunter. Yeah. Uh, not me though. He, he's very much against me. He's anti me. Well, he's you, done you, nothing that I would run. Have you read? Um, I'm looking at one of the images. Have you read any of these? I've I've no. I've looked at a lot of this stuff. I haven't paid as much attention to like the continuing release of information i've just heard little bits and pieces since the initial announcement um but no there is there's some genuinely very exciting stuff in here um the i have heard like the creatives that they've named that are going to be in charge of some of these projects um Mm. and a few of them are extremely exciting to me um jeremy slater drew goddard those are those are two people that i got yes yeah yeah. yeah. Um I mean in in immediately. <laughs> yes. Um and also like hearing the sheer number of comic book people involved uh that aren't um uh what's the guy's name who was in charge of DC for like the last 10 years? Um Jim Lee. Oh yeah. Jeff yeah. John. Yeah. yeah. Like hearing a comic book name that isn't Jeff Johns was like, oh Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Even if it's not a person who I personally feel a deep affection for, just seeing names that are from the comics, that was a real refreshing thing for me. Yeah. So, well, they had, I mean, yeah. They've been saying names for, like, at this point, like, six years, but then those things never happened. Like, one of their first... I'm not was... talking about hiring Tom King to write one of these, though. That's no, yeah. different. They hired Tom King to write a New Gods movie, like, yeah. Six years ago, yeah, they, they did. That is that is fair. They did bring Tom King in a while ago, which um, he's he's a very different writer compared to most comic book writers. He has a very yeah. different resume. So actually, before, really interesting be, guy. Too. Before we go any further into the minutia of this, I just I'd like to just talk about the books that he he was referencing for yeah. the feel that they're getting, like fucking alan moore swamp thing like that is that is going for every deep nerd cut you can possibly I get i think i literally own every book that he posted like going for the uh, yeah or swamp thing you know yes after, there's been so many that just never took off two movies and a tv yeah. show that just died well and the well, tv show is just because they fucked up on the budget someone saw <laughs> what is this what show is i've never i've never uh-huh. yeah. i've never heard uh, of this show there was a swamp thing show i've never heard of that i don't Yes, it aired in this app called the DC Universe app, which is <laughs> this, that doesn't exist. Sounds like sounds like fake news. Sounds like sounds like a falsity. I'm pretty thing. sure you can find it on Discovery Plus. Ah, uh, that's where they're hiding it on Discovery Plus, where I'll never go. Uh, yeah. You have to <laughs> click it into the like one of their HD TV things, and then it's under like New Orleans uh, renovation. <laughs> So because the, uh, if they put it in their stack baggins, that's how I'll find it. If they put it, if they put it there, um, yeah. Um, no, but mm-hmm. like uh, hearing hearing them say Alan Moore is exciting. Um, my only problem is like it does seem like they're just covering the same ground over and over again. And I understand most I... people didn't see that show. Um, but I don't know though, because if if they get the right writer and director for that they could mm-hmm. go into the really, really weird end of Swamp Thing. And yeah. it's James Gunn, and I trust that he actually would do something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I feel like they're a lot more open to doing things that might be a little bit more interesting and experimental. No, and, I'm... And even, yeah. I was just like, even the part that makes Alan Moore's run a little different is like, the psychology angle of a lot of his run when it comes yep. to Swamp Thing, and then yep. I'm, t- t- we yeah. don't care about spoiling a fucking like forty year old comic. No, right? no, who no, cares? No, like, we like basically yeah, find you? out that he's <laughs> not actually. A- uh, was it Alec Holland? 
Yeah, I like he's right. not. He's not actually a person. He is. I mean, that's that, that's even canon in the newer DC runs where they're like, he's never been Alec Holland. He's like, no, a, well, he's, they did like a, they fucked around with that. They have, but he's like regardless. A but yeah, yeah it's um, it's well, it's not even as a copy. It's that I thought it was that the the plant life yeah, absorbed Alamore, his yeah. soul. Essentially, Alamore did weird wizard research on actual um, mm-hmm. this plant bacteria thing um, when they were testing worms and you know, oh, like yeah. his synapses, and yep. then mm-hmm. the plants absorbed that because there wasn't enough of Alec Holland to absorb. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. I need more. Of you so, filling it in with bugs. <laughs> there's so many like, good, there's so many good characters in that and if they yeah. that is like the his story with gotham is so fucking wild yeah well they're not they're not gonna touch that they're not gonna touch that probably not text the uh the the sex sweet potato i mean <laughs> i think all that stuff is more likely than it was like i i i i only watched the first episode of the show because it disappeared shortly after um but I don't think that show went into the Batman stuff. I don't think it got nearly as weird and sexual as. Do you want to? Uh, do you know? Yeah. Want to know what showed up at the very end of it? If you don't know, of the show, no. Yeah. What What, what happened? Uh, Woodrow uh, apparently showed up at the end of the show. Oh, like I think I of the post credits. He was cast. It was um the guy that played. Oh man, I don't he, know. I don't. He was I don't in, know. He was one of the Howling Commando dudes, and then he was. He was Blob in that bad Wolverine movie. Oh, oh that dude. Peter Durand or Kevin Durand. Yeah, I believe he was Woodrow. Oh, no, I that's don't a know. good Woodrow. I never, I didn't see yeah. it. I just read about it and I was like, oh, wow, that sounds like they're actually going to start getting into some, yeah. some I, swamp I, thing I, lore. I they um, heard um, they were going into like more of the Lemire stuff in that TV show. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, Woodrow is not in the Lemire run. No. Uh, same not. era. It is the same era, though. It's that same. Yeah. I know what Lou was talking about. He's saying New Fifty Two, and in the and yes, no, yeah. gotcha. And the show, the show, like again, based off the first episode, like they were definitely referencing some things, and like they were seeding things even in that first episode. But it also, you know, I was I was like, I'll take any swamp thing I can get at the time. So I ignored like the show was fairly soapy, um, and I I think I'm out on that <laughs> for a while. Um, but I, I, I'm very interested to see how far James Gunn will go because we have to remember Groot was a weird concept to people in 2014. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no uh, that whole movie was weird. like those were like, yes, F less characters. Like, it's a fucking yeah. talking raccoon. I think I'd read like one book with them and it was from like Annihilation or something, and they're like very side characters. And well, until Annihilation Conquest when they got their right. first whole series. Um, but no, I was going to say, let's uh, let's move on to some of the other stuff instead of going into the the deep, dark pit of Swamp Thing. Um, I was so happy to see Superman, all star Superman all-star as Superman. the reference point for yeah. Superman, because that is the purest distillation of what Superman is in the comics. Mm-hmm. And that makes me so happy. It's he's, to call for some people who don't really know what Superman's like. Yeah. Yeah, they're not yeah. going to have this nihilistic monster. Like, and they did an animated one, what, like... Yeah, they did. And but years ago, no, that wasn't bad. No, it wasn't. But they are trying to adapt the Frank Wheatley art style, and it didn't work. Mm. Um, but yeah, this, this gives me a whole lot of reason to be excited. A, because it's Grant Morrison, and yes, fucking mm. yes. Actually, two of the things on that list are Grant Morrison. Um, and... It's just, it's everything anybody who loves Superman could want. Like, it's him just being, like, the aw shucks farm boy who just wants to be good. And that's that's what True Superman justice needs. Is the American way. Superman. Oh, no, no, I don't know about American way. They probably no, won't go but that like, far, but yeah. yeah. He's the blue boy scout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they said a quote. I don't remember the exact wording, but they said truth, justice, and something else I can't remember. Um, but it wasn't the, the American way. way. And the way um, for all whites. <laughs> oh, I was going the other it. way because who hates James Gunn? Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. DC's yeah. wokeness. Just yeah. wokeness. Mike, uh, I'm Mike Cernovich and Bruce, Connor. Uh, um, oh, I thought you said something, Connor. My I bad. Don't know. Uh, um, um but I was gonna say the role in that. He also has like that they're doing that son like the Damian Wayne stuff. Like I'm a yes. Damian fan. Yes, I am too. 
I'm too. Um, and, and also I, another Morrison run on Batman. Yeah, which I own. It's like three feet from me right now. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and there's a lot of interesting things they could do um, with <laughs> Amy and Bruce that we've never seen conceptually. Um, yeah. If it's Bruce. But uh, if no, it's Bruce, they, it's Batman is. and Son. Um, yeah. But I would no, love they, if they killed, like if he went away and it became a dick movie later on, like a second one. Well, that was the th- the thing I had read initially, and I think that they had initially said is this is going to focus on the Bat family, and yeah. it's it's going to have Damien be the big new addition. So yeah. it's mm-hmm. going to have an already established Batman and all that. They're not going to kill him. <laughs> They're not going to make him go away. They're not. not it's not, not going immediately. To no, the only chance not. of it is because then they would have the Batman, and then if you got rid of the one in this, then they'd be kind of more separate. But they've already sure. said the Batman film that exists at this point is not part of the main line. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. most people. Do. No, I know what Lou is talking about, though. Yeah. He's saying, like, it's it's easier to separate the two if there is no Batman in the or there's no the, Bru- yeah. like it's not bruce no bruce exactly sense. like yeah. I, I just I, I completely understand what lou is saying is what i'm getting at like i i get what yeah. he's saying that's a very studio thing to do though and i think james is like no yeah. as he showed in his run in that run with damien i think initially he's only around with bruce for a very short period of time in the beginning yeah, he is, and and then he dies, or quote unquote dies, and then Dick is Batman for a lot of it. But then the yeah. tail end of it, the Batman Incorporated stuff, is Batman and Damian I, working together. I, that I love the Batman Incorporated stuff. I that would be so hard for them to do, but it would be oh, they're so not. Hard no, they're out. never. They're never going to adapt anything like that. But what they will no, take the is too big. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, well it'd be a great they're... way to introduce characters for shows. If they it would, to. I think that they would like there's certain stuff that they're not going to do right away. Like, I don't think you can go from introducing Damien to introducing, if I'm and correct me if I'm getting this wrong, an army of enhanced Damien clones. Oh, um, that's not Morrison. That's not Morrison. Yes, that, that is. is. That is after that he is... left. That's no, no, uh, no, no. That's that's from New 52. No, no it is. The... No, guys, I know, it, but he... Batman, Batman Inc. The yes. the giant thing that was walking around with Talia that was a yes, clone, yes. and there yes, were other right. ones of him that they were that yes, was that out there right. fighting. What yeah. Arlen is referencing is though someone went back to that plot and did like an army of oh, Damien. Yes, no, fuck did. that. Yes, fuck that. Yeah, yes, Eric, no, they went back uh, to it. That's how Damien died in the New Fifty Two. He was killed by one of the clones. Yeah, that That's, was that was Morrison. That's during Batman Inc. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I'm glad I'm we agree to... on this. I'm trying to yeah. be there's like a whole there's like someone did go back to the cloning thing though. They did. Oh, yeah. What was that they, what was that big dude called? They called well, him like the, the disciple or something. Or... Something like that. I don't remember. They they continued it in the resurrection. This is when I was this is when I was at my deepest in like comic stuff in New 52, where I was reading I don't remember who took over uh after Morrison uh Peter J. Tomasi. Yeah, yeah. Um and yeah, so they did. They brought that back. They also made like Damien clones who were also man bats, if I'm remembering mm-hmm. correctly. Something along those uh, lines. Yeah, and Damien yeah. had superpowers for a little while because of yes. whatever. A dark side. They resurrected him with on Apocalypse. I think I don't know. I can't read comic books. Who the fuck knows? Comics. But I don't think that they'll go that weird. Not certainly not right away. But well, yeah. the- all I want is a Batman like Zuranara. Like nope. I don't to, it'll never happen. I just want to nope. But garbage. with James Gunn, I think you can be assured that they'll do references. I think that you can be certain of that. Like he'll do deep cut references. He'll put things in the background. For so like you're saying, the, there's a chance that we get a bat mite. Oh, in I'm the very there's a, there's a there's a high chance we get a bat mite. If Mr. I mean, Mind shows up in Shazam, yeah, there's probably a pretty good chance that Batmite yeah. could show up. And Batmite's in the story, like with like his whole thing is with the Zoran Ara. Oh my god. I mean, <laughs> James, okay. James already set up Batmite, so as far as I'm concerned, that's already happening. That's not even like it's just he's there. He's in the continuity. Um 
Although I do believe in the announcement, James suggested that Team Peacemaker might be in their own universe. I don't know if I was just misreading that purposefully, um, or if that was what he actually meant. Um, well, they but, would still be part of like the old Snyderverse, right? I think he suggested it was oh, just yeah. its own separate thing altogether. Like he, like he said something to the effect of, "This is like the Peacemaker universe." <laughs> like, like oh, this so is it's like Doom Patrol. <laughs> Kind of. R.I.P. Oh, cool. So that's something else that Discovery HBO can cancel. Um, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, the the last the last of the comics that that I had no idea this was coming, but the fucking Authority, like mm-hmm. I I I love that fucking comic, but part of the appeal of that was because they were kind of doing a pastiche of Batman and Superman at a, a point in the series. And they're gay, and they love yeah, each other. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, Batman and Superman, but they suck each other's dicks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Batman doesn't do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I saw... He, uh, he doesn't eat know. pussy. He <laughs> he does suck dick. <laughs> it's, oh, mm. Jesus Christ. Mm. it's like a hot dog. Um, yeah, I don't... I just... It seems like so out of left field, and I don't know if this is like a peace <laughs> offering to edgelords, I mean, well, that was my assumption. They said I, it's Gunn's yeah. passion project. Really? Yeah, the, the ones that I said, but like, that was a quote from him. Huh. Okay. Uh, the authority is described as a quote unquote passion project for Gunn. That makes, wow. sense. That makes all the sense to me, though. Like, he, that's he, really he, it's very much like his stuff. Like, it's very yeah. brutalist in a comedy ish sort of way at times. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, I just I, I don't. I feel, I definitely could see him wanting to make a gay Batman and Superman and throwing it at everyone's yes. face. Like yes. I'll, I'll, to put, I'll put it this way: if the DC universe were already healthy, um, and it was already a thing that just ran on its own and didn't need to be restarted every two and a half years, um, and it was just ongoing, um, and James Gunn were just coming in and he's not being put in charge and they're announcing a project and it's this is James Gunn's thing as he comes to DC after leaving Guardians and they announce him doing this authority movie and that was all I it would completely make sense to me because it feels like well this is the this is me going over to the other side and doing something a bit more I guess adult um well, in comparison yeah. to Guardians the other uh, I had from a Warner Brothers perspective is in a PR way, doing the authority in any way, but as long as it's Midnight or an Apollo, mm-hmm. they are going to basically shine yeah. a giant spotlight on the big missing thing we have ever seen from Marvel MCU. Yeah, gay yeah. gay superheroes. Yeah. Just yeah. but like I'm like not like, oh, like we kind of get it. It's her girlfriend, but like they touch each other's hands. Like this I mean- is no these dudes need to straight up fucking kiss and be like real right. into it for this. To it be needs to, yeah, it's going to be much like a topic we're going to bring up very uh, last yeah. episode three. Um, it could be if, if they do it right. Uh, well, it's the the authority also has a huge connection to multiverses, mm-hmm. and it's something that got pulled over into the DC universe or the proper DC universe by uh, the the Morrison. Book, uh, multiverses because or, yeah yeah, multi- they were straight, yeah they were straight up in dc universe in new 52 oh they were okay yeah i didn't know that i didn't know that um yeah because they were kind of like oh, i don't want to get into it it's fucking crazy. no yeah yeah <laughs> well, but yeah it's but if if this is also, their big push is a multiverse yeah. then this this movie slots in really really also, well i feel like it works better in a world where the boys has been on for like what five years it does it do- yeah. i want to point out that james gunn did i think he specifically said the authority is actually a spinoff of that superman movie um which, Which means one? the authority is in that Superman movie that they're making. Um, no, the, the, the Superman announced. or the Black Superman. The uh, not, I don't. That one. The I only the only happening. one that they've actually announced properly. Like yeah, I right. don't I don't think anything has come out about that supposed yeah, Black yeah, Superman was, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, so there was there was one little thing he said that thing is that's still happening. That's all he said. Yeah, I did see that that, that yeah that it was still happening. Like that, but that—that's like the 
that's the beginning of the sentence, end of the sentence. It is still happening. No further news. No nothing. No, yeah. no nothing further to report. Um, I mean, that's a. I would call that a good sign. Um, uh, you know, it, it goes against this notion that David Zaslav is like a fucking racist or whatever. Not my um, Superman. Just, uh, you know, just cutting anything with the people of color and keeping Ezra Miller for some reason. Um, oh yeah, that poster just came out. <laughs> that did. Um, which uh, apparently it's the best de- best comic book movie ever made. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, uh, that's pretty. Long. Best where is where best is that review coming from? By a, <laughs> a sexual predator. Where is where is this best DC comic movie coming like from? That's a, apparently anybody who, on the inside who has seen it who talks about it, whether it's in a public forum or not, that's the thing that they keep on saying. And I don't know. Could they pay people what to they tell they their it's friends? Not a, it's, I'll say this in a not shitty way. It's not like it's the highest bar. I mean, true. <laughs> well, but true. what are they? What comic movies are they comparing it to? Are they that's comparing right. it to Marvel or are they comparing it's it to DC? DC? Movie, right. But that's the thing. No, are so they comparing it to their other comic book movie ever? And it's the oh. same thing every single time, which is the main suspicious thing for me. Is like it's the exact same sentence. It's Oh, it's the greatest comic book movie I've ever seen. I'm like, it's literally, it's, bots. <laughs> it's that line of phrase. But this is, again, I don't know. Like, this, it triggers the conspiracy part of my brain. It's like, can you convince somebody to say that as like a whisper campaign to their friends who are journalists? Can you convince your employees to purposefully spread misinformation in that way? Like, who would even do that? Just, I, I've never even heard of a studio doing that. I would like, say, having just finished a book about like the kind of modern film industry, um, I literally just finished the essay, the, the one on Hollywood in China. Mm-hmm. Good, right. a little bit of a drag, but very interesting if you're in it. What Hollywood has done to work with China without mm-hmm. even having to say anything at this point, nothing I put past them. Fair. And okay. yeah. Oh, well. it's, yeah. mm-hmm. I was just going to say, Connor, since uh, Flash is one of your favorite superheroes, um, what are your feelings on this? Um, very complicated, because I don't want to give Ezra Miller money. Um, I don't mm-hmm. want to give Warner Brothers money to give to Ezra Miller because of how they handled that entire scene. Like, a literal criminal who was doing, like, like yeah. global headlines... I- Day in, day Active out. crime spree. Yeah, he did yeah. a fucking crime spree. Uh, they're just like, yeah, whatever. Movie first. Um, I may yeah. bootleg it. I don't fucking know. Like, I'll figure that out when, when the day comes. <laughs> I do think it's like. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, like, it just reminded me, like, man, they canceled how many things, and this is coming out. That's yeah. That's actually something else that's that's good that you mentioned that. Um. Who was it? The not Gunn, but the other guy who's the co-head of DC, saying that, yeah, saying that Batgirl was unreleasable. So again, this goes to my thing. It's the same quotes for that movie as well. Like it's literally the same line of like, no, this that movie was unreleasable from every person who sees it. Both Mm -hmm. again. Well, now it's technically unreleasable. Yeah. It's yes. being repeated on the record and off the record. Like people are saying this off the record to their friends and they're saying it in announcements like this cuz that's the same announcement. Like in it, it I didn't actually watch the video because who has time to watch these announcements from beginning to end. Um but it was literally like within minutes of each other James Gunn says uh the I don't have much to say about the Flash movie other than it's one of the best comic book movies ever made. And then, like, within the same line, either before or after, Saffron says, oh, and by the way, Batgirl was unreleased. Um, mm. Which is, like, okay. <laughs> all it's right, just, I guess you're just, just, like... Really shitting on, like, all the creatives in that film? Yep. That's, yeah, that's, yeah that's, a, that's the weird thing to me. It's like, I mean, I'm glad that those, those directors clearly aren't hurting. They're still going to get work. They just worked with Marvel. Marvel. Um, yeah. so like, that actress oh, I feel fine. so bad for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just... And 
I completely respect her for like saying, no, I'm not taking a meeting with you. <laughs> you fuck threw my you. movie. Yeah, fuck <laughs> off. Fuck you. Yeah. You canceled the, you canceled my movie and kept the pedophiles? Okay. I see where you're, you're right. You're at. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mm, I don't know. I mean, I it's what I've always said every time I've been crestfallen by DC slash Warner Brothers is I want there to be a wealth of comic movies that are good out yeah. there. I don't care who and I'm just I'm really hoping with what James Gunn was showing us for his uh, his idea board, whatever you want to call it, that they hold true to the feeling of those comics, because that's mm-hmm. those are all amazing runs. They're all so good. At this point, what do they got to lose? Yeah, they've done. Yeah. Slightly different versions of the same thing over and over again, and. You know, yeah, yeah, it's... Lost, can they lose any more like fan well well, well it's, maybe it's a good time to win <laughs> is the way I would put it. it's it's the first moment i think where we could see marvel really lose steam um we've said I, that I think, how many times though i'm just saying like if if it's gonna happen though it's gonna happen now like if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen now or it's gonna happen five six years from now so like it's a good time to win if you're going to win. <laughs> um, but I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's two completely hypothetical sure. scenarios. So it's, it's, and, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't see how Marvel's juggernaut can be stopped at this point. Like no, it, I, I, I completely agree. I, I completely agree with you. Like I do think that they have too much inbuilt momentum to completely fall apart. Um, it, as it's, it it's, it's not even like a you it's just it exists it's just yeah. there. like yeah. it's not the mcu it's like no marvel it's... is another thing like, and i think the people there. yeah and i think the people who are like they're losing it they're they're you know they've gone woke they're gonna go broke all that all that stuff and all like the you know we've talked about the art the tourists and all that and all the various different things and the people who are like oh marvel's gonna fail a lot of those people, we only think that they're as vocal as they are and that there are as many of them as there are because of Twitter and social media. I don't think that they're that much of the population. Um, I think it's a like a very, very vocal minority that is like Marvel is slipping up. I think most people are still on board. Um, yes. You know, I, like, I, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, and I, I, like, all the kids I work with, the only movies they talk about are Marvel movies yeah. and horror movies. They don't talk about any goddamn thing else. Yeah, the, well, the, the one yeah. guy I work with, um, he's a black guy raised in Philly, like just most non like comic book caring dude that you could probably ever meet. And he's like, hey, when's the next Marvel movie coming out? And like he'll ask me questions about the characters and be like, oh, yeah. so so what happened with them then? I'm like, well, this is what happened in the comics. This is where I think they're going to go in the movies. And like they just I don't see any way, even even if Ant-Man is somehow terrible, it's not going to matter. No, it's Aaron, not going to matter. You bring up a great point. A lot of people have essentially that version of a relationship either with friends or co-workers or acquaintances that they know when it comes to these movies there are a lot of people who know the comics they go to the theater opening night with their friends who don't know as much and they've just been watching the movies and they're excited to learn more after the movie is done they're excited to be there sitting in the theater waiting for the credits to roll as their friend explains it to them and it only makes it only enhances their experience. They're mm-hmm. not like, oh, this is well, that sucks. <laughs> it sucks that I'm missing out on something. Um, and and I, I have seen this. Like I, I've seen this in the theaters. I've been there opening night, and I'm like watching other people with their big groups of friends talking to each other about the movie, and I don't hear a lot of disenchantment. Like the most real life disenchantment that I've seen as a person going to one of these theaters was I was going to see like a very, very indie movie. Um, Something like very few people watched. I think I was maybe one of five people in the entire theater. Um, And they showed a trailer for multiverse before it. 
And I mm-hmm. definitely heard somebody behind me say, but I have to watch 15 out of the movies or whatever. And that's the most negativity I have seen in real life about these movies from just like a normal person or a seemingly normal person that I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, I, think the, I think I have the most I've seen from kids is like, oh, I didn't really like that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Like, I didn't really like that one. And that in that statement, it's like, well, there's 50 other ones for me to like, and I still will give yeah. it seven a try. Just like the comic books, which <laughs> is exactly what I think they've been and, trying and I, to do. And I do think with what they have coming on their slate, like I do think, at least for Marvel, like and I'll say they're like diversifying their portfolio of characters, literally in skin tone as well as like in the different genres, mm-hmm. is going to help them. Yep. Like yeah. maintain. Like when Blade comes yeah. out, whenever that happens, it's going to wreck everything. I think. I don't even think we need to wait for Blade. I wouldn't be surprised if the Marvels is like mm-hmm. one of the biggest movies of all time. Mm-hmm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I think like the steam will have built, and people will have spent a year like with the Kamala Khan character, and like people going back to watch that show um, and being like, "Oh, I love this character. Yeah. I would love to see." Yeah, a good. movie with her and Brie and um, the other actress whose name I'm forgetting um, for some reason. Um, oh, we like know that, why, that, Ireland. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back in time. I'm not finishing that sentence. I'm not. You, you don't, you don't know when I begin. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna go back in time and do what? <laughs> I'm gonna Schindler's List two um, <laughs> callback. Uh, but other yeah, DC I, stuff. Um, I, I, I like the plan that is here from what I can see. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, the is still happening. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And I know they announced TV shows as well, but yes. I just I didn't I didn't really pay as much attention to that. I mean, Supergirl, I hope they can figure out how to make it work. I really do. T- TV shows are where I'm the most worried. Mm-hmm. Um, they canceled all the good ones. <laughs> yeah. And the new ones that they're doing, like some of them seem interesting. Lanterns is supposed to be like true detective with green lanterns. It is, but it's also like plot wise, it's supposed to like set up everything. Like it's going to like tie it all together. It's Stuart and is it Hal or is it Guy? I think it's Hal. Uh, It's Hal. Yeah, that's right. It's an interesting pairing. I thought it would be, I would have them rather do Guy. No, Hal. they can't. They have to. They would have to do Hal first, just, just for on Earth. I, you know, the guy I, is too I much of a prick. Yeah, well, that's why I think it would be a more interesting buddy cop, like cop duo, with like I mean, the two of them. I'll just say this: I think it's. I think it was ridiculous that they did Hal ten years ago. Um, yes. I think an entire generation of children who grew up with John <laughs> as the Green Lantern uh, and children who were growing up at the time who were like, no, John Stewart is the Green Lantern. <laughs> we're like, who the fuck is this dude? <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I'm forgetting about the cartoon. I, I totally yeah. forget that yeah. so many kids had John Stewart as their Green Lantern. And Wally West as like, he Lantern. is John Stewart yeah. for an entire well, generation. Wally West like, was, was the Flash I Flash had. Like- when Wally I came, the flash for years, like twenty years. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Wally was, Al, Wally was the yeah, Jeff Jones. Wally was gone for a long time too. That's yeah, he like, was. It's also like if you look at the characters, like besides skin tone, there's a lot of similarities between John and Hal. Like they're both military guys. Like, so like mm-hmm. guy, or even it, it would have been interesting actually if it was like older Green Lantern, hard ass John, and new annoying shithead Kyle. I'm surprised that they weren't like. I am shocked they weren't like. Is her name Jessica Rodriguez? Is that the character? Who I'm, Cruz. Or I Jessica Cruz. Cruz. Um, that I was really. Comparing. They actually did a book. It was her and the other new one who I really like too, Simon Baz, who's Pakistani, mm. I think. That, uh, um, I don't think that they wouldn't do it. I just don't think they would do that first. Oh, his, oh, his origin it's... is so politically charged. Oh, yeah, never mind. I'm that... looking at the wrong thing. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, um, his his origin, his overcoming great fear is him being arrested by cops for them thinking he's a terrorist. Mm. And he overcomes his fear of the cops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like that is it. 
and he it's because he gets arrested he was car he was stealing a car and the car had a bomb in it so they think he's a terrorist and it's just like he stole a car from like a super villain and literally it's right. like he's being interrogated by cops and it's like you're like you have overcome this great fear of basically the entire u.s criminal justice system crashing down on you you're a green lantern now. oh okay i'm um, sorry to interrupt um so it's supposed to one early version of the script focused on an original lantern hero alan scott in a story set in the 30s or 40s macho lantern guy gardner in a more modern times and one set in the future featuring the character sojourner mullion yes she's the newest sojourner she's the one who had the uh, tattoo over her eye yes okay she's actually a really cool character i really like what that character a lot Hmm. Mm. yeah i mean that was from an uh, earlier script so i don't know (laughs) Yeah, they, they they went into a lot of description about the other Lantern show that we've been hearing about for like a decade, it feels like, um, that seemed to almost be going many, many times and was a movie and a show and back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they were like, this is not that one. This is, a di- <laughs> this is a completely different one, unrelated to that one. None of that script even made it into this. And they said that that was more of a space opera. Um, yeah. This is Earthbound, and this is the quote. This plays a really big role in leading into the main story we are telling across film and TV, um, which is interesting that that's where they're like putting their center focal point um, with a character that, I mean, I have to imagine every generation of executives at DC post 2013, uh, 2011, I don't remember. Um, Connor, do you remember when that Lantern movie came out? I don't. Oh, um, Jesus. Um, you mean the... the <laughs> no, the movie that we had oh, to watch. Ryan, oh, the Ryan Reynolds? Reynolds? Uh, 2011, yeah, okay. So yeah, I'm sure every generation of DC executives has been like, this character, the one that we're still trying to pay off. Yeah, the one we're still <laughs> getting cursed from. It's like, hey. I can point to the dollars that we still owe from that movie. Um, but anyway, like it, it is interesting that I mean, this, to me, that shows that they trust James. I think, I, I think. Well, that's the thing, though. I had uh, I had seen a report saying that some of the higher ups in WB were a little bit miffed about the way James was handling. So those are people. Hmm? If I if I read it right, those are people who aren't currently there. Am I? wrong in that like my oh i don't are- i don't know i didn't get to read the entire article it was something that i saw the headline i'm like oh i need to look yeah, that up later and i never like, did WB, wb executives upset with james gunn comments i'm like do something <laughs> yeah yeah fire him, yeah. Like, fire fire him. exactly yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead and fire him see what happens see what happens you know if he has a literal blank check just like in his mailbox every day <laughs> <laughs> like sorry we're sorry we're sorry we fucked up so yeah. uh with um, but uh, these other shows i'm not i'm not like paradise <sighs> lost i need to yeah. know more I, yeah. I like i need a showrunner to be announced like how yeah, many times I, I have you been like oh big I, fantasy show that they're spending a lot of money on and it's bad <laughs> well that's uh, that's so, the yeah. thing like when my wife and i watched uh wonder woman that was the thing we enjoyed the most was everything that took place in themyscira Mm-hmm. Out outside of that, yeah, but I'm not going into Wonder Woman. We're not going to audit that again. Um, but with Connor, you having uh, mentioned that, oh God, all right, you don't want to give money to the Flash movie because it could go to Ezra Miller. Mm-hmm. That uh, that ties into something that came out recently that has a really whole lot of discourse around it. Oh, wait, oh, are God. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy? Oh, oh that, yeah. That, yeah, I didn't it's, connect to. It's something that Hunter and I have been talking a bit about. And it the thing that bothers me the most about this is I'm not seeing a whole lot of people who are transgender telling people to not buy this game and not do this yeah. well, it's so a of, bunch like, of like, using this term it is lots of like virtue signaling and like it's it's a bunch of outrage. cis white people doing it and that's that's where i'm kind of like well 
<laughs> How much I'm, of this I'm exists? The game because I think Harry Potter is boring. It's because he's white. Um, mm. I, and because they're our, it's because they're all white. Yeah, that's true. It's well, actually, in this game, Except no, there's the guys. there's a multitude of colors in this game. Um, but Arlen, this also kind of ties back into what you were saying about like in social media is an amplifier, and it the <clears throat> the hubbub might not be as large as people think it is. I don't know. I'm I'm curious what some of your views are on this. Whoever wants to spout out first. I mean, I like, will. I don't. I don't think game boycotts work because one, like this is first of all, mm. this sold six hundred million dollars, like for its fucking pre-orders. Um, they don't work. Yeah. Period. Also, like if you're gonna boycott yeah. a boycott a game, you're not just boycotting like someone like Rowling. You're boycotting an entire development team who slaved over this fucking thing for how many years? Yeah. yeah. Really disrespectful yeah. to those people. Like it's it's hard to boycott a game because you're you're really you're you're hurting a lot more than just you know what you think your intended target is. And before before we go any further, I I would like to point out that we are <clears throat> we are allies to the LGBTQ. I what else? I I can't remember. I feel like there's a new letter added to it every time LGBTQI? I see it. UI. Yeah, I, I mean, guess that is. I I, I I feel comfortable just saying the, the queer community. Uh, and enough. until Fair somebody enough. is like, that's not that's no what I've heard from yep. everybody. Fair enough. Most- yeah. All right. And, and so, until, yeah. 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 We are we are allies of the queer community. It's I mean, and I'll I'll admit it straight up before anybody else goes like I bought the game. I bought the game because I love the universe. I know that JK Rawlings is a terrible shit. And the amount of money that's going to go to her, it's not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You could have hundreds of people, thousands of people millions of people boycotting this game she would still be rich and still be making money off harry potter and it's be rich forever it this feels like connor was saying to an extent it feels like virtue signaling a little bit and that's that's um, what bothers me the most with this no go ahead arlen you you obviously have something to say so i i've had a very personal window into this mm-hmm. um i don't want i'm not going to say too much but uh, I have close family members who feel very strongly about this, who I would say are not outside of the community. That's okay. as far as I'll go on that detail. Um, and they feel very strongly. I don't necessarily agree with them, but I also understand why there is some anger. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can see all the different perspectives on this, and I continue to come to the same thing I've said in the various chats. This is, to me, this is your own personal choice. And you have to make it right with yourself, whether or not you think that this is right or wrong. Um, And if you do have people who are close to you who want to ostracize you or get angry with you, um, that's something you're just going to have to deal with. You're just going to have to accept that you might have people who are like, I... I can't be friends with you. But if that is something that is actually happening and you're not able to come to adult conversations with those people and hear their points, at least, then that's, then, then that's, that's how you want yeah, to do I, it. Actions, actions do have consequences. So, yes. you know, um, know that it, it ties into the kind of more it's happening politically in the country currently. Mm-hmm. So that yes. amplifies this specific situation. And like I said, it's like having family members, having students, like I have family members and students who are trans and fucking love Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I will go to every con dressed as a Harry Potter character. I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. And I do it at this point for these ones, like as a yes, you suck, but I'm taking this for me because this is about me. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you could also feel like fuck her at the same time. Also, this yeah. game doesn't really um, well, and that's, to do with her mm-hmm. as far as her involvement goes, as far as I understand. No, yeah, She just no. gets a check written at the end. Yeah. And then she it's, gets yeah. about some dumb shit about, like, they magicked her shit away. Yeah, or yeah. The, <laughs> or how she's probably freaking out about there's an actual trans person in the game, which I will admit feels very much like pandering. And oh, I, it's, 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 a, it's a way, it's a, I'm sure that was a note from the studio. PR. 
put this yeah. fucking yeah. in here. Put this fucking in here. This will help. It's yeah. it's PR because of her. It's PR because of the guy that we found out in 2020 who was yeah. like a fucking yeah. Cernovich knockoff or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. like MRA it's, asshole. It's all yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can either go back. It's like she and all her stuff is based on like fantasy shit that comes from Tolkien, and his shit mm-hmm. has a ton of fucking problems. And we still all give his like. He just I mean, I've been saying. I mean, you're correct, Tolkien, and just like uh, fairy tale lore. But like, I'll say this as many times as I need to. She is just copying George Lucas. Um, oh yeah, like or her, her well, storytelling is bad. It's Ooh, the like, hero's like, journey. Yeah, it is, it is. But like the explicit plot points, where it's like, I, if George Lucas could have sued you or wanted to, he probably should have, but he didn't want to. So a billion other people copied him as well and now he can't sue any of them because it's a genre you can't sue a genre into non-existence unfortunately watch me um, um <laughs> the uh the thing the thing i would like to add to about uh the like uh, hogwarts legacy of hogwarts whatever um it's really only going to be super appealing to fans of the series like yeah. It's, it's, I'd said in another chat, it's without that skin on it, it's like a high seven, low eight game. But because they did such a loving job of getting that world onto this game, it's for me, because I like Mm -hmm. the Harry Potter world, it's easily like a nine. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it's a good game, regardless. A good Harry Potter game that lets you run around and do something. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's well, it's it fit for every everything in this genre. Everybody wants a like really good game. Like who doesn't mm-hmm. want an amazing Star Wars game? Or yep. uh, yeah. there's uh I've actually heard good things about the Dune um what is it, real time strategy game? Like oh, God. I would play I can't, I can't, I can't I, deal with him. I know, but like I would love I don't know how the fuck you would make a Dune game, but make me a Dune game. Spice worms. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it. It's a good game. Like it's yeah. it's done well, and it's you know it falls into some of the open world trappings, but it also has kind of a very minor Elden Ring feel to it. Just because I think they took some lessons in how they built the map. Mm-hmm. It, I wonder if it's huge. Holy shit! It's a very big map. Like I'll uh, I'll. I'll do a screen capture tomorrow and I'll post it in the chat then so you can see. Now, can you unlock a feature when you level up to magic away your shit? No, unfortunately, that's not one of the abilities. So you're just but, uh, you have to role play that you are carrying around like shit in your pants all game. I guess. I don't know. You could. I mean, I'm sure you can get some dumpy looking pants. So the only thing I will stress, because I actually do want to move on to another topic, yeah. uh, is. I do suggest seeking out the perspectives of the not insane people mm-hmm. and the not like people who are just white knighting this. Like yeah. those people do exist. And like, even if you have already made your decision about whether or not you're going to buy the game, I suggest listening to those people and understanding what their perspective is and why they might be angry. I'm not, again, yeah. I'm saying I have, I've avoided having uh, dark uh, arguments about about this subject myself by just keeping my opinion to myself mostly. Um, But I understand again, the perspective of the people who do get, who might be very upset about people buying the game. Yeah. I I, I completely respect that. that And I, I I really do, but I, I have my reasons for wanting to get the game and it has nothing to do with JK Rawlings. Yeah. No, fuck her. And this is, so this is one of my reasons for like, fuck who cares <laughs> from my personal perspective is like she's an industry to herself within yep. that company yep. the fact that they're like oh we're even gonna like make adaptations of your dumb turf books that nobody reads we're gonna make Ugh. adaptations of them and put them on hbo max that's a sign that they are so deeply invested that they're not gonna let her go her, they had her a chance contract to must be fucking wild I yes. uh, so this is my theory based off of purely Wikipedia the other night as we were having this conversation or morning whatever it was for me it's all you know 
um it's all <laughs> it's all very confusing lately i, I work um, third shift i get it um but my understanding is basically that she has the ability to um pull it all okay. at any point yes and like basically if she was to say no you can't do that their options would be to just keep remaking the movies mm-hmm. like oh, and that's it if i if my understanding of mm-hmm. contract law is correct if jk rowling was like i'm out bitches she could go to nbc universal start a rival harry potter franchise and all wb could do is like remake all the things that they already have if my understanding of any of this is at all correct that's like, yeah that's that's how i understood it and the fact that they have a huge portion of their theme park that makes them billions of dollars a year mm-hmm. dedicated to that version of the movie they're never ever ever letting her go she gets everything yeah. she wants until the end of time. Who the fuck wrote that contract? Um, oh, somebody after probably the third Harry Potter movie made whatever amount of millions of dollars. Yeah, They're that like, is like a do- well, also. Like- you have to remember she's a book publisher, or she's in book publishing, right? Book publishing at the time, because you got to remember this is 1999. Book publishing hasn't reached that level of power since. <laughs> I don't think it's nope. been that powerful no, in this century. Um, and I don't think you can book, even say book any... publishing lawyers. Yeah. Like, mm, well, so. think about it. Cause wasn't, wasn't the, uh, were the twilight books coming out around the same time as the Harry Potter books mm. I, and, shortly after, yeah. and the, the hunger game books were coming out or the roughly hunger around games were towards the end of Harry Potter. And but they, so this but, is the thing with, with pre-published works that you already that already exists before you go to a company like this. Um, and you're not a corporation, you're an individual. Your rights are just completely different from say Marvel doing the same thing because that's a, because it's another corporation licensing their work. Like the contracts work very differently. I, I have some uh, understanding of exactly how she's able to have this much power because a couple years back, I remember like listening to like screenwriters talking about how, it's the hot thing now to just take your script that you've written and release it as a comic book or as a podcast yeah. or something, because if it's already a pre-existing medium or a media, you have far more control over it, which is why, yeah. for example, Neil Druckmann is able to just be like, I, I just bring last of us with me over to HBO and it just happened. Like that's, that's my understanding of it, that, that, well, no, um, it's Sony owns the the company or the studio that he's the head of. Yeah, but apparently he somehow got it. He he has some percentage of the rights. Like he. Oh, he, I'm sure. Yeah, like he and uh, apparently the, these are his words. So again, however much you want to listen to Neil Druckmann, um, <laughs> he was the final decision on whether or not Sony would make that show with HBO. Like he was like, no, I just uh, if if you have a place for us to make it, I say yes, and then we do this. Huh. Um, and it was same vice versa. It was Craig Mazin says, uh, we go over there and I give them a pitch and we have a show. Um, so they both held enough power on either of their ends to make Sony and HBO play nice, um, which is nice for the two of them <laughs> that they were able to get that to work because it usually does not go that easily. Um, do we still want to talk about Harry Potter? Because I think that was a nice segue there. Actually. No, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a nice way to point out a segue too. Is when you pointed out. Uh, <laughs> um, we're very good at that on the show. But yeah, I was going to yes. say, yeah, it's the the Last of Us. Like we haven't talked about this at all since we haven't recorded uh, that much since yeah. the show has been out. Yeah, I I'll admit, like I went into the show expecting to be like, oh, this isn't this is that great, and holy fuck. Holy fuck, the show is amazing. I, I, ex- I, I mean, I said this many times. I expected the bare minimum HPO level of quality from this. I, that was blown way out of the water. I'm very happy with the show and what it's doing and the way it's handling these characters. Um, I think the baseline story from everything I know was like good enough for what it was. For a video game from 2013, it was 
you know, it's it's fine. Um, I think it's they're doing like an excellent job of adapting or ad- adapting this this yeah. material. Well, the story um, of the game is basically the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like with their own post, like what made the apocalypse. Yeah, mm-hmm. which which is it's such a good idea. Like mm-hmm. it's something that that yeah, more people should little, actually know about. It's a yep. little. It's like it's slightly different. It kind of goes back to the Alan Moore Swamp thing, like doing research on real animals. Mm-hmm. Yep, from biology, but like, yeah, but like, I, I, it makes sense that it works as a TV show. Yeah, that and the idea that well, it's also that could theoretically happen and just make everything about it fucking terrifying. Well, yeah. yeah, that's I mean, that's something my wife has been like talking about for a while, and it's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, okay, yeah, like TV show finally saying something about it because, yeah, that's that's the most horrifying thing. If if they learn to live in higher temperatures, guess where we're a really good melting pot for? Mm-hmm. Like, we're wet and warm inside, so we're and done. The, and the- and the thing the show like really narrows down on is like food production in yep. the modern world is very um well what's the word I'm looking for problematic Mo- I was gonna <laughs> no like I was it's too focused it's very focused and many oh, people yeah. m- many like people in like uh, ecology and like the ethics of food and food diversity and all these different things they've essentially been saying this like our food structure and the way that food is produced is very weak. We are at like an all time high. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's not it's quite like, potato pre potato famine levels in Ireland bad, but it's pretty bad in terms of like oh, how I, much I, we rely on like three or four things for all of our food. I feel um, like I read somewhere or heard in a podcast about like soy is like almost at the point of breaking that, like what the soy is. Yeah. Like in mm-hmm. the food thing, like it's getting to the point where, and I think it all basically comes from like one strain. So, mm-hmm. like, one infection could wipe out soy on the planet. Yes. Oh, so, like, so the fact that they're like flour, this thing that is like broadly used everywhere in the world and is like, it's like patient zero for this infection. It's just, ah, uh, it's really scary. <laughs> It's really scary, and flour is one of those things that's on the list of like, if if somehow we lose control of flour, or something ha- bad happens to flour, a lot of us might starve. Well, it's like, it reminds um, me of Logan. Like, what yeah. they do in Logan, they they put like some yeah. kind of gene suppressant in corn syrup. They did, yes. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah. it's it's. I mean, that's that's one of the real concerns. Bef- uh, not to go too deep into this side of the subject, but um, one mm-hmm. of the real concerns when the uh, invasion of Ukraine started was that yeah. a lot of our wheat is coming from areas like that, and mm. people don't realize how much wheat is used in everything, like including yeah. the breading on things that you buy, and just yeah, it's right. it was a very real so concern. Mm-hmm. Uh, wheat. Makes up seventeen percent of the world food. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Rice is twenty percent. Uh, corn is ten, and soy is six. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, um, yeah. I, I, getting out of the the minutia of the uh the disease, <laughs> I'd like to uh point out that is Patrick Pedro Pascal our best like multi. I don't know, multi-genre actor. Cause dude can jump around so well and and does a good job every time. He really like, excels in he's like, a great actor. Shit. I don't understand, but he's like excellent this genre stuff. Well, well like then, unbearable well, unbearable weight of massive talent. Like yeah. he's so fucking good and so funny. Um, and then he's the yeah. best part of Wonder Woman eighty four. <laughs> exactly, <Yeah. laughs> and he's he's playing a supervillain. I mean, he's funny in that, but he's still playing a villain. But like, it's just then he goes into Last of Us, and he's this amazing serious role that you believe he's Joel and he's grizzled mm-hmm. and all that. Like, I why God damn it, why isn't he in everything at this point? Like, he's it's so weird. goddamn good. Well, and and Joel is think... like the stretch, though. <clears throat> in my opinion, like that's what he was doing for how many seasons in Narcos five i mm-hmm. i didn't watch narcos so i don't know oh, he, he's basically young joel it's like he is yeah. so good and I, he's almost I mean, like 
he reminds me he's almost like a Hispanic Harrison Ford. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. He there's um I don't know what it is. I think his versatility is is amazing. He is he is like the character actor who became like a movie star that mm-hmm. doesn't exist anymore. Like that rarely ever happens, but like, he's not a movie star. He's like the biggest TV star, but he has like this movie star level charisma. And I don't, I don't know if we've actually seen that in TV before. Like it's, it's almost like the birth of a new thing. Um, because a lot of TV stars in the last few years, they, they get elevated to the movie level. You know, they go on to be in the Marvel movies and that's, that's what they do from then on. But like, he has maintained this like I am the person that you that is most desirable to cast in big TV projects while doing movies at the same time. And it's it's very much the inversion of what it used to be, where you would maybe star in a TV show to get into movies. Um yeah, perceived and he's, at this level yeah. has not existed ever. Like there right. was the original, like I would say like Sopranos era yeah. prestige TV. Yeah. And then we're at a point where, like, I, prestige TV and movies are equally loved, if not like yes. TV over movies at this I, point. I think I think TV is like it's approaching this like <laughs> inching above, and you know, to my point, like, y- yes, we all love. Um, how am I forgetting the actor's name who played Tony Soprano? Um, how James Gandolfini. Gandolfini, like we all love Gandolfini. Gandolfini didn't go on to like be in five other huge tv shows after that um that like that's of, that's the crazy that thing about also it. the the that was a lot of him true, he was a fucking true. crazy person but like, I, in all I, the best I, ways as an example kelsey Grammer has done many tv shows after oh, right. <laughs> that's because he's got to keep paying for divorces <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. True, true. and children uh, with yes. us, and with wives. funding conservative action packs but we don't yeah. have to talk about that um <laughs> when i was thinking it was like tom hanks but he never went back to tv right. yeah that's the thing he's a film guy like this is like that film movie star career but on tv and that is I, eric i did i not even thought of this before you said that but that is what it is like it's the movie star career but on television i can't i mean you know there are other examples i guess of tv stars but like every tv project he does is the biggest thing on earth and it's partially i think because of him you they're usually fairly high concept but i think he's a big he's a big lead in to getting us in like again going into the show it's pedro and it's hbo i'm in (laughs) yeah even if i even if i have mixed feelings about the franchise as a whole going in i was like well you got me you got me i'm I'm here Oh, sorry, Eric. No, it's just they've they've managed to present a post-apocalypse that's, you know, and I know the games did this, but like it's it's horrific and beautiful at the same time. Like yes. the shot of when they first get outside oh, of the, the fucking like, like, the green overgrown over the bomb. Mm-hmm. Fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just it's it, I've never played the game, but you know, I've, I pay a lot of attention to video games. If you guys can yeah. tell. Um, mm-hmm. And so I basically absorbed the story from this game. Same. And I've always been like, okay, whatever, you know, post-apocalypse. Yeah. That's a cool twist here and there. The cordyceps thing yeah. is neat, but There's some interesting yeah, ideas. The ending I'm is just, interesting. I'm, on I'm its just, own. I'm shocked yeah. that they've managed to translate everything I know of the game so yeah. well into this show. And then you get an episode like episode four with Nick Offerman where they're just like, well, yeah, we're going to go three. off reservation. Oh, that was episode three. We're going to go off yeah. reservation and tell you possibly the. You. Yeah. Yes. But it's, but it's, you get, it's not devastating because it's like, oh God, I can't believe they killed them. It's devastating no, it's because not. you got to see them live a whole life. It is. Like it's, yeah. in a world and none no of that was, no hope. They got to live out, you know, and none of, together. none of that was in the, None yeah. of that was in the game either, which is insane to me. No, well, I so, think that it it balances mm-hmm. the scales in an interesting way. Like it, it's a full display of the beauty that can exist in these situations. It reminds me of a show that Eric and I really liked, uh, Station Eleven, where it's mm-hmm. like both things can be true at the same time, 
absolute horror can exist in the same world as something utterly beautiful. Oh, um, so love can bloom on a battlefield. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is like real life. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good point. Very good um, point. I was going to say, like, we've been talking about this all from, like, the TV show angle. It's like, I was just mm. thinking while you guys were talking, like, this is kind of the first, like, critically acclaimed video, video game adaptation. Game adaptation. Yeah. Yep. Like, and I feel like it really is showing people who are, like, you know, curmudgeonly, oh, video games aren't art or, like, good storytelling. It's like, motherfucker, right. you can do, like, what makes a TV show at times better than a movie is, like, you know, is to video games to TV shows. Like, yeah. yeah. And you can mm-hmm. do so much great, like, real storytelling. And I, there are so many good games like this. Yeah, they would work so well. With that, like... That's why uh, Hunter isn't here to defend himself. So feel free to jump in in his <laughs> as his soldiers against me. But like, this is why I'm in on all of Sony's future TV stuff that they announced. Because if uh, if I'm this kinda... is part of the reason why they're announcing it, I I can understand them giving some of it a chance. And what else? What else have they announced? So. I mean, all the major stuff that they released. God in the of past War, years, Ghost, God. Uh, I was gonna say like those two one. are gonna be fucking home runs. Um, As, please, it, please. Yes. oh god, what is Ghost, Ghost, how can they fuck up Ghost of Tsushima? My actually, own, the only, my actually, only concern I, I thought I'd read recently. Um, I thought I'd read recently big. that Ghost of Tsushima had lost somebody big that was connected to it. Oh, did it? I, I think I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm, yeah, I could have sworn I saw something about that. Um, so yeah, Ghost of Tsushima, God of War. There was another game I was thinking that I really hope they oh, don't, Twisted Metal they don't try to adapt. Oh yeah, oh, no. Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal yeah. sounds fucking dumb. But like <laughs> that is that is one there where I'm not like, a fan of the game. No, I like it, the second one in black. Twisted Metal was announced so long ago that we've already have like a a wealth of bits that we've built up around it. Mm-hmm. So I'm still concerned about that one. Yeah. But it's like, you know, after this, maybe, and and part of the other thing is these television announcements, I do think Last of Us being so good and turning out good and also getting this praise isn't going to stop them from producing those other things. I, I also, as I pointed out, when they, they refreshed some of these announcements, I think The Boys is a big part of this and why they're like stridently sticking with Amazon and why they're doing more superhero stuff with Amazon is like they they can see the pattern of okay this is a way we can adapt the things that we do and people and actually get good things back from it build up an audience that respects our stuff and if we can brand it correctly like we just build up the goodwill oh, for Sony as a corporation Sony doesn't um, own the boys like that's that's they no, just happen they, to huh they pro- they produce the boys. They produce. They license the boys. They're, yeah, they license it, but they don't. But it's they don't own the actual like the the comic. Like they don't own the rights to the entire series. I didn't think they they're the ones who brought it to Amazon. Is my understanding. You you might you might be correct, but they are the reason why it's at Amazon. It's a Sony Television production. Yeah, I'm uh, wondering is well is Seth Rogen does he work with Sony a lot? Because I he think, does work with them a lot. Yeah, well, that's, his home that's is where, at Sony. Yeah. Yeah. His well, home is at Sony. Remember, You're correct. He, yeah. It's his whole thing that fucked up Sony in the first place. That's how close his deal was with them. Oh, yeah. yeah but the, the North but, Korea movie. but he, yeah. I mean, he's still stuck with them because, as yeah. Seth has said, if, you know, at least in terms of movies, as long as it's not, it doesn't get too expensive, Sony leaves us alone and our things seem to do well. Yeah. Um, but, like, mm-hmm. The Boys has been extremely successful. And, I think that, again, I'm just saying Sony is involved. They can see both ends of it. They understand that if they do prestige at a high enough level, it just does better for them. If they do things well and they take their time, it will only reap benefits. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot of this. Again, that's why we're seeing refreshes on these stories. That's why we're getting updates, well, I think. Game of Thrones has opened this door, out. and I think what Sony's doing good is the opposite of Amazon. Which yes. they are kind of like they do own or are connected to these IPs, but yes. like they're in a, they're in genre adjacent. 
Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, there's fantasy, but they're not quite fantasy. I did find the Ghost of Tsushima thing. Basically, the director has this like eight million things, and he's like, I'd love that to be my next thing. Mm-hmm. But he's just wrapping up the next John Wick movie. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah. And yeah. and and there's he's rumored to be doing a Highlander movie with Henry Cavill. Oh. There was okay. also another project where it's like, oh, I'm definitely doing this after John Wick. Oh, yeah, you know, that and the, the Metal Gear movie that's coming out, right? Yeah, sure. Well, the Metal, <laughs> uh, Metal Gear, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, God of War. God of War makes so much sense. Like, it's like yeah, the fantasy absolutely. shit we've been all getting, but it's basically The Last of Us with fantasy. Yeah. If, yeah. I'm assuming they're doing the new games. Like, we don't need they to see, like, Tap X. <laughs> So it's gonna go right to. So we're not gonna yeah. have like we're not gonna have a scene where it's like tap X to hump. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, probably not. It's, the camera I isn't could... going to tastefully move to the right as Kratos has a three way with a mother and a daughter. <laughs> um, God, I don't know why that broke me. Um, anyway, let's go back to Last of Us real quick. Um, I. Mm-hmm. I'm just very happy with the way the story is going and the work that they've already done. I wouldn't be surprised if like when they get to the stuff later in the franchise, that people got mm-hmm. real angry about, I wouldn't be surprised if they just fucking nail it. 100%. Well, if, 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 have you seen if, you the stuff know? that the actress has said or the actor? I don't know. I, have, the... I tried not to pay too much attention, but what please the, tell me. Um, I don't know what would be the right neutral Standard. So they are, they are, they have talked about um, in interviews themselves being kind of playing with whether or not they are non binary or gender fluid. Because, mm-hmm. like they said, like, oh, like everyone calls them this, but then when someone mistakes them because of the way they're dressed in the show, like as a boy, they get kind of excited. So they've been talking mm-hmm. about how, like, they're kind of connecting to that aspect of the character, which mm. I think is really important for that character. Because of what kind of an like that character is an icon for like mm-hmm. the LGBTQ yeah. community. Yeah. So, well, the absolutely. the other thing to keep in mind with how the uh, series ends, if I remember correctly, that that performer um, hadn't played the game at all. Mm-hmm. Yes. They yeah. they went in not knowing. So I think it'll be interesting to see how they'll bring that across, not having any idea what the ending of the last of us is which mm-hmm. I, yeah all right i won't say anything because i'm sure there's people yeah. and there's like yeah. and there's what that another game, game 10 years ago i, I would say <laughs> yeah. the people who know the ending of last of us 2 don't need us to spoil it for them and the people that want don't want it spoiled okay. oh, i'm not talking about last I, of us 2 i'm talking about yeah. last of us 1 well I, I, that's one. what i was that's what i was talking about with later stuff i'm talking about like when we get to season 2 or even 3 territory like well, I'm saying probably, when we get there, what's that middle I, game they did? The, it was I, like a, that's a whole it, season on itself. I feel like it was a DLC, and it is supposedly being worked into this. Yeah, it's a huge it's, part of Ellie's story. In the trailer, they show they the show Ellie character. with the other character. Yeah, yeah. yes, they, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm assuming that's what the next because I've seen episode five. Um, very good. That's all I'll say. It's very, very good. Uh, continues to be very good. <laughs> um, I'm assuming that that's what the next episode or two is about. If I just had to guess, based their off connect, of what their we've seen initial in interaction. Yeah, if I had to guess, it's a lot of that. And well, so we see again. I don't want to spoil it, but it is in the trailers. We see uh, the actress who played Ellie in the games clearly giving birth. So I assume that she's playing her mother. Um, I'm just okay. just guessing. And we're um, not, that seems and like we're a... not talking about Elliot Page, which no was a whole other part of that game originally. Oh God, that that's a whole other that's a story for another era of we need a hunter of on this. Yeah. Yes. Um. But so she's clearly in the show, and I assume that that's part of it. I assume that like. One of the next few episodes will be like an Ellie origin story, I'm guessing. Well, that's, um, how many episodes is this first season going to be? It's it's nine. So okay. I'm guessing the last two are them in Wyoming trying to find Tommy and 
uh, the gang that, again, based off the trailers, Troy Baker is a part of a gang, and that mm. that's his cameo in the show. So these next two episodes, I haven't seen the trailers for a while now. I don't know what's in those next two episodes, but if I had to guess one of them is the Ellie, or both of them are the Ellie part. If I'm just going off of pacing mm. and the way that they've broken up the show so far, where it's like it's like three movies so far. Um, again, I've seen episode five, and it like very mm. much ends like as its own chunk that you could turn into a film separately. I don't, I don't, um, I don't watch the trailers. I, when the show is over, that's it. And I don't know anything until the next episode uh, because I don't I, want to ruin anything for myself. I'm talking about a trailer from like before the show even aired. I was like, oh, oh, this, okay. Okay. like, it was like, it was like an autoplay thing. And I was like, huh, well, you know, I'll watch a that. way for them to show people like, yes, we're doing that thing. Yes. Um, and like, it was, it was like a, oh, it was like, no, it was um a look at the season ahead. So it wasn't too yeah. in depth. But like I know Ashley Johnson, I know what she looks like. So I was like, well, that's Ashley Johnson who played <laughs> Ellie in the yeah. game. Uh, uh, and again, if she's in the show and she's not playing Ellie's mother, I would be very shocked. <laughs> um, that would be. Uh, you know. I do think. So, so, how long ago did Uncharted come out? Oh God! Shut the mouth. first one. No, it launched the, the movie. The, the movie. movie. Oh God! Oh, the movie. Happened. That. Yeah, uh, about a year yeah, ago. Because like, we've talking I, about Sony this whole time. I'm like, that's the last like kind of thing they did, right? That's the last film yeah. thing that they really tried. I, I and I think that might have been a nail in the coffin for them trying to do films. Well, it's like if you're video Tom Holland, game. You must be watching the show like video game the films. <laughs> video game films cannot exist because video games, by their nature, need eight one hour episodes yeah. to tell the stories that they're unless, telling. Unless you're like a Sonic or a like oh yeah like and it doesn't yeah yeah and and to your point eric like it it wouldn't work to just adapt the short games because circling back to the beginning of all this like why would you adapt her story into a film like her story is perfect as a game it's it's perfect in the format that it's in and the, the size that it's at and it's perfect for that format and you know you can't take the uh, you know, adapting Stephen King short stories into films rule into video games. Like, it's just, it makes more sense to do games as TV, absolutely. Yeah. And films, it's just a different medium. Although, um, although we also, or at least I used to say this about comic books and adapting stuff. Like, so it, 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 yeah. Yeah, it I, could, I, I, I would still say mode. that I, I think comic books do work better for the most part. Yes. In long form. But I think what we got and now we're like circling, circling, like the MCU was really a like long, like long form, long form version yeah. mm -hmm. of a comic story. Yeah. It's well, like whatever yes. any episodes of a show. Also, if you if you just break everything down to its very base parts, a fundamental aspect of filmmaking that like if you take even like a very basic high school intro to like 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 intro to intro like film studies course that they offer in some schools like one of the things that they will teach you is storyboarding that's like it's like a base lesson like you do you know write this storyboard hand in the storyboard uh you have six uh you, you only have six squares and it's a person walking home from school and you have to draw that in six squares that, that comic is book. comics yeah like yeah. that is it's just comics book. so like which is out, on their base dna a crucial aspect of early filmmaking and film liter and film literacy is what a comic book is so like no duh they're gonna transfer over very well yeah. because one transitions so naturally into the other which goes back to why were these companies so fucking dumb with having comics creators work more like work on scripts and films like yeah because <laughs> well that and, and because these companies didn't want to have to potentially pay right. these writers more like yes, that's, the yeah. comic book industry is very good at, at being very cheap with the talent they like, also like writers who they can control yeah. um which is I, funny because all before. all the stuff we talked about of what Gunn is doing is like the least controllable writers. 
Well, well and Warren almost, Ellis for different reasons. Well, yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. I was well, it, talking about the two Scotsmen, but like, oh yes, yeah. the, the two Scotsmen for sure. But like, I think that's why Gunn is there. Um, yeah. Gunn is his success in this career is because he was a long time screenwriter and like screen fixer. Like he would come in to like make your script that isn't working work. And also taking in studio notes and like, okay, I'm just going to do your note and I'm going to show you how your note is dumb without telling you directly to your face, your note is dumb. Um, And like the best screenwriters, the most successful screenwriters can do that and do that well. Like that's why you get a William Goldman in the old days, like making like that film for like 50 years. He gets that sequel (laughs) to that Scooby-Doo movie. Like, yeah. He started with this shithole Warner Brothers company making those dumb Scooby Doo movies. Yeah, like that's yeah, like what that's, made yeah. him a name. Like that's how he built a career. And also the other thing that is unsaid in Hollywood is like the people who last for a long time, especially people who last for a long time who mostly make not good films, are the people who are just easy to work with. Like, like yeah. that's a big part of it. And is like easy you're and, pleasant to be around, and they're cheap. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, wasteful yeah. money. Yeah. I, yeah. Connor, did you want to add anything else about Last of Us? Uh, it's fantastic. That's it. I mean, I'm kind of yeah. just yeah. enthralled by it right yeah. now. Like, I'm waiting to see how it goes. And Same. That's it. I'm running Same. Steam too. I've been <laughs> waiting to work tomorrow. Uh, okay, I yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I wanted to bring up one, one last thing that I had on the docket <laughs> was, uh, anybody who has access to Apple TV Plus should watch Shrinking. It's a half hour comedy show. Jason Siegel plays a shrink that's uh, decided that he's going to take a more hands-on approach with how he's helping his patients. And Harrison oh, Ford, I saw, I saw Harrison saw. Ford is in it, and he is yeah. fucking hilarious. Uh, he's I so good. Yeah. I saw a clip of the show, and I saw a clip of him on one of the late night shows. Did you see that mm-hmm. clip? No, I don't. I don't. Oh, know. I only saw because TikTok. And like he was talking about how he like, was like oh, didn't see. he's like, oh, I'm gonna get into wearing Siegel saying this. I'm gonna get into wearing um coveralls like a janitor mm-hmm. as like God going dick. into work. And so he goes in and he's a fucking giant human. Yes. He goes in and he's like, and I'm like kind of nervous. I don't think anybody's gonna like say anything. And who's waiting at my trailer but Harrison Ford? Mm-hmm. And he's just staring mm-hmm. at my overalls, and he's like, "Oh, so you notice my overalls, yeah, kid." And it's like, "Oh." And then the next day, he posts a picture. Harrison Ford showed up with his own overalls. That's awesome. <laughs> and I think they were pink. Okay, I love it. But yeah, um, if if any of you are fans of the movie Forgetting Sarah Marshall, like mm. this is that Jason Siegel is okay. this is the one we're getting in this movie. Like he's so he. Hmm? Yeah. Go ahead. I, I, he's the hook for me of, of anything. Cause like, yes, I, I know people really love the Ted Lasso's and people really love the scrubs. Um, both shows too, too happy for me, <laughs> not <laughs> dark and mean enough for me and my dark, horrible soul. Um, but Harrison Ford selling me doing some really work over on uh, 1923. If I do say so myself, uh, so like, I, I'm on a Harrison Ford train, so I might, I might, might stick with it. You should, um, you really should. Yeah. It's great, Connor. If you can access Apple TV Plus somehow, be oh, it sure the it high seas, mm-hmm. then <laughs> check it out. It's it's quite good. You should also watch Severance yeah. if it's on that site you use. Um, yeah, yeah, that's all I wanted yeah. to add about that. And uh, <laughs> really, really quick, uh, hey Lou, how's that Steam Deck treating you? Uh, really liking it. It's the biggest problem with it is that you mm-hmm. want to do so many other things to it mm-hmm. that like you don't play games i spend my time like on the desktop mode just like fucking with stuff oh no do stuff no it's i i got mine um which side note i sold some stocks that i was tired of staring at and hoping that they'll go up higher so that was how i was able to afford it end of sidebar um I just bought Spider-Man the first day I got it. And that's all I played for like a week before I started fucking around with anything. Like I just wanted to enjoy the deck for what it was, which is a system to play games. I'll engage with this for the first time. Uh, (laughs) um, There's been an ongoing conversation. This is very personal. So if anybody wants to tune out, they can. Uh, 
<laughs> there's been a conversation about buying a Steam Deck or buying a PS5. Um, huh. Just based based off of that information, do you think a Steam Deck is a suitable replacement for a full console? Just based off of your experiences. Do, do you just want to have a system that you can put a disc into? It'll play what you want it to play. That is my... That is more my leaning. Then go with that. Go with the PS5. The Steam Deck Deck is my first experience with a PC, quote unquote. So it's it's a hefty learning curve. Like to the point that there's a lot of tricks you have to do Mm -hmm. to get to play a whole bunch of shit. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Like not not a whole bunch of shit. It's it's not it's not not for the the weak of heart. Yeah. Yes. Mm Yeah, it's it's a wonderful little machine, right. but you you have to have a, an inclining of what you're doing when it comes to gaming. Like if you, you have, have a to... hard time with Ubuntu uh, <laughs> OS, I, don't yes. go for this. Uh, <laughs> well, it's I don't know. The Steam desktop is pretty easy, but that's neither here nor there. I, I didn't want to I, I didn't want to go on forever about this. But... No, but as a metaphor, if you're somebody who <laughs> like in, you know if you install a digital machine and you tried installing yes. Linux and you're like. Oh, this is more complicated than I thought it was. I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. Yeah. If that's your mindset, maybe not for you. I, I hear yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it's it's an amazing little piece of machinery, and I'm shocked that I'm able to walk around if I chose to, but I don't because I just mm. play with it in my house. Um, mm. I, being able to walk around say, and play Spider Man is yeah. I would uh, say like it really makes me wonder why neither of the uh, like the two companies make yeah a portable yeah i don't understand and if it either. wasn't for ip it really makes the switch like i um i i yeah. have theories about that i i think it has to do with the cell phone market um for sony for that yeah. makes sense i don't think that makes sense i don't know if that makes it sense for, uh, it microsoft. doesn't make as much sense for microsoft i do i do think it would be but then again i you know a lot of this stuff is complicated you know releasing a dedicated portable when you like maybe have deals with samsung to support game streaming maybe part of it i don't know it's 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 also uh, that steam well valve had the money to do this because they don't they're not going to cannibalize half of their 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 money by releasing a handheld while they also have consoles because sony and microsoft are not going to get rid of consoles like home consoles anytime soon yeah. So exactly. them them releasing a handheld would cannibalize their audience. Right. Yeah. That's why. Mm-hmm. And Nintendo is just Nintendo, so people and, like, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, Nintendo, they and it's and it, it's just, well, they destroy sales the other systems. Yeah, Nintendo. Nintendo had like a billion dollar war chest when the Switch yes. got released, so they're okay. I they think already. Yeah. I think the Switch has already passed the PS4. Yeah, sales. I think it has. Yeah. That happened recently. Yeah. Like it is, yeah. Like the number two best-selling system of all time, probably going to be number one. Yeah, after and, after Tears of the Kingdom comes out or whatever, um, the new Zelda. And I have to hear about the Elf Boy again for another mm-hmm. month. Elf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can't wait. But yeah, with that, I guess we should probably wrap up. We should. Does I don't think we've done a two-hour show like this in a while. I mean, it's the whole thing. Uh, so good. You did. <laughs> you did. Congratulations. <laughs> Happy Black History Month. Yeah. <laughs> so who who has plugs? Not me. Lou, you should go first. Um, I have none. <laughs> yeah, Regist- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Register uh-huh. to vote. Uh oh, no, that's actually a really good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eric? Get involved. Uh one second. <laughs> uh crap. I can't okay, find well... it. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead, Arlen. No, well, it sounds like Lou is trying to say something. Oh, I don't what? Go no, ahead, Lou. no, go ahead. I thought okay. of something. Okay. Um, LHP is still happening. It comes out when I have time to edit it, basically. So, so go listen to that show. We uh, A top 10... Uh, movies of the year just released and we're doing a a 2023 preview uh, that is recorded and again i just have to edit it and put it out so yeah look forward to 
I think like five hours of show all together with those two. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's I for me. I remembered what I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. Um, if you hate mass effect, please talk to me. You can send me to your DMS at young underscore comic. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I found what it was I wanted to uh, end the show with, which, Hey, I've been Eric Fedor. You can find me at Eric underscore Fedor on Instagram, especially dogs, food, cats, comics. Um, I don't know if you guys knew about this, but uh, the Vaporon is the most compatible Pokemon for humans. I mean, uh, no. Not no. only are they in the field, they are.